A ball attached to the end of a long string is made to rotate in a horizontal circular path at a constant speed. The forces acting on the ball are its weight and tension as shown in the diagram. So we see weight going straight down, tension at an angle parallel to the string. We see the horizontal circular path of the ball as well. With reference to the free body force diagram, explain how it is possible for the ball to be moving with a constant speed and yet still be accelerating. Okay, so let's start with the constant speed part. So if we look at the ball's motion from above, so from this direction here, then the ball is moving in a circle like this. This is the center of the circle. Let's say we're considering the object to be here right now. It's moving this way, tangential to the circle. If the velocity is that way, the displacement is that way as well. And force is always towards the center of the circle, resultant force, if you're moving at a constant speed, which we are in this case. So force is towards the center of the circle. In this case, that force is the horizontal component of the tension force, which would be T sine theta. The horizontal component of tension acts towards the center of the circle, goes this way, and therefore will be our centripetal force. So our centripetal force, the horizontal component of tension, is perpendicular to displacement. And if force is perpendicular to displacement, that means that the work done is zero because work done is equal to force times displacement, but more specifically, it's equal to the component of force that's parallel to displacement, that component of force multiplied by the displacement. So if the two things are perpendicular, there is no force in the direction of displacement, and therefore the work done will be zero. Work done results in a transfer of energy. So if the work done is zero, that then means that the there's no transfer of energy, and so the change in kinetic energy would be zero. If there's no change in Ke, there will be no change in speed. That's why we are moving at a constant speed. And then for the second part, and yet still be accelerating. So there's a couple of ways in which we can approach this. One way is that there is a resultant force. The resultant force is the horizontal component of tension. That is the F that we have here in our diagram. If there is a resultant force, that means there will be an acceleration due to F is equal to MA, Newton's second law. So we could just leave it like that. We could also approach it from the velocity perspective. So we know that the direction of velocity is constantly changing. The velocity is this way to begin with, again, as viewed from above. A second later, it's going to be over here, and then it's going to be over here, and so on. So the direction of velocity is changing. Even though it's moving at a constant speed, velocity is a vector. So there is a change in velocity. And if there is a change in velocity, there will be an acceleration, because acceleration is rate of change of velocity. So you can approach it from either of those angles to explain that there will still be an acceleration. So I'll just write this out. 